Welcome back to the T-Rex Labs channel. We've been talking a lot about general T-Rex stuff and some political stuff. It's been a while since we talked about hard skills and equipment. So that's what we're gonna do today. I want to talk about three different types of radios. When we've done radio content in the past, uh, you guys have generally asked for specific product recommendations. And I've always said it depends, uh, which is the last thing that you want to hear. Uh, and it depends on a bunch of different factors, but my brother David and I have talked about this quite a bit, and we think that there are three categories of radio that will help you understand better what it is that you're trying to do. So we have our public radios, we have our private radios, and we have our secret radios. Because we work backwards from communication, the things that we actually want to accomplish with the radios. We have our public communication, private communication, and secret communication. So, uh, let's run through some scenarios. Uh, one scenario where you, uh, you got your radio bag and you're lost in the woods, so you need your public radio to talk to as many people as possible. Uh, you want to be able to reach out and be understood by as many people as possible, so you don't want encryption. You don't want your low probability of intercept radio. You want something that is public. Uh, this Yesu ham radio is going to be good for that. It's a dual band UHF, VHF, analog and completely unencrypted radio. So it's a great public radio option. And of course, the other thing that most of you will have will be uh, some kind of Baofeng or Hofeng or Woshang, whatever kind of Chinese radio you actually have, this is a fantastic option for public radio communications. Uh, and there's a ton of different scenarios where this is the case. You're bored at a conference or you're doing disaster recovery in some sort of situation, a natural disaster uh, like recent hurricane recovery efforts out in East Tennessee or Western North Carolina. Having the ability to talk to as many people as possible, to listen to different frequencies, FRS, GMRS, and ham radio frequencies, find people to talk to that need help, or find people uh, to talk to when you need help, these public radio uh, communication understanding, that, that's really important. Uh, but then there's an additional category, the private category. So let's say you are doing disaster recovery out there. Uh, you're in an area that has been stricken by a natural disaster, but now you're no longer doing search and rescue, you're doing body recovery. You no longer really want to talk about stuff that you're doing in the clear. You don't really want to coordinate with the coroner uh, in the clear. So you switch to your private communication. This is a Hytera radio and it's capable of uh, doing a lot of the same things that the analog radios are, but it's also digital. It has the DMR uh, protocol built in and it also has encryption. So now we can turn on our 256-bit encryption. We can talk to people that we have previously coordinated with because we've shared our encryption keys between radios. Now we can have a private conversation about body recovery or something else that's just quiet. We use these radios here at T-Rex Arms to do various business related stuff. Now, before you in the comments start talking about how encryption is illegal on ham radio frequencies, I know, but it's 100% legal on business band frequencies. To get your business band license, we've talked about this in previous T-Rex videos, now you can run encryption on your radios uh, with those particular frequencies. And you can coordinate with other teams and share keys with them if you're working with them ahead of time. And now you have private communications. But remember, there is a big difference between a private uh, communication and a secret communication. This is great for talking to people in the other building about inventory, talking to search and rescue teams about various things of a sensitive nature, but uh, this doesn't make me invisible. So if we were in a different scenario, if we were in Ukraine, for example, we're dealing with an invasion, we're dealing with various other things, uh, this private communication is not secret. The fact that I'm transmitting encrypted does not make me invisible. It is really, really easy for people with the right radio hardware, with electronic warfare equipment, uh, direction finding capability to discover me. And remember that adversaries oftentimes don't really need to hear what you're saying. They kind of don't care. They just want to know where you are and they want to know how many of you there are. And so it doesn't really require that they need to break your encryption. They just need to be able to see your transmissions, figure out where you are on 
the map, how many different transmissions there are, and there's, there's all kinds of data that they can grab from private radio communications with regular electronic warfare equipment. Uh, for example, it's pretty easy for them to figure out that uh, you're using a Baofeng for example, one of the downsides of some of these cheap Chinese radios is they have spurious emissions. That means when you're transmitting on one frequency, uh, there are little harmonics that appear off to the sides of the frequency where you're transmitting. And uh, somebody with an SDR, somebody with some uh, uh, frequency analytics equipment or electronic warfare truck would be able to figure out these are guys using a specific type of equipment and there's roughly this many of them and they're roughly in this area. And if they have better antennas and maybe more than one van, they can figure out more precisely where you're at. So now we're talking about secret communication. Now the problem with secret and communication is they kind of go against each other. If your goal is to talk to as many people as possible, but secretly, that's obviously at odds uh, with your own self. If you want to be able to reach out a long distance with a very powerful radio, well, now you're talking about something that's really easy for other people to pick up and intercept, which is why secret radios uh, are often working within a concept of low probability of intercept or low probability of detection. So a good example of the secret radio would be the Beartooth radios or possibly even Meshtastic because these are both low power radios uh, and they operate at 900 megahertz. They're not, they're not something that's gonna have a super long range. So with your meshing radios, your uh, ad hoc network forwarding stuff, you will probably be able to run a bunch of radios at a very low power and hop stuff from one to the other without really sensitive listening equipment being able to pick up on exactly where you are at and what you are doing. Remember, we're talking about very, very different things here. The desire to reach a long distance and coordinate with people far away requires power, it requires loudness, it requires a lot of energy, makes it really easy to detect. So when you're talking about secret communication, you either need to do it in a very small space, in a very quiet way, or you need to hide it inside of other traffic or in plain sight. And this is true whether we're talking about radio communication or other types of communication. A great example of this would be Paul Revere's famous one if by land, two if by sea message, which involved putting a lantern up at the top of a church steeple. Uh, the lantern on the top of a church steeple is extremely visible, which makes it a great communication method, but it's also really obvious. And so making it a very simple thing that has no clear or distinct meaning to the enemy, to the redcoats, means that you can kind of hide your message in plain sight communicate it with as many people as possible over a long distance. And uh, so a great example of secret communication there. So as you think about the different things that you are trying to accomplish, the different things you are trying to prepare for, I think these three categories are especially helpful. Public, private, and secret. Secret communication is always gonna require a huge amount of preparation, whether it is coming up with the meanings of the secret messages, like what one, lantern or two lanterns means uh, sharing code keys, making sure that you are having the exact same equipment. These two radios do not talk to each other. You need to make sure that you all have compatible equipment, compatible settings. And uh, Beartooth involves, I would say Beartooth pretty much only exists to work inside of ATAC, making sure everybody has an end user device, you know, or phone, running ATAC, talking to these devices, shared keys, etc. All has to be done on the front end. I've talked about this in the Beartooth video. The fact that this is on 900 megahertz where there is a lot of commercial and industrial traffic, the fact that it is low power, only a single watt, means that this traffic can kind of hide in a lot of places. And you can sort of do that with other radios too. If you turn this radio's broadcast or transmission power down to less than one watt, uh, and you use a directional antenna to point it only at people that you specifically want to talk to, and maybe use some terrain masking so uh, we keep hills in between us and the enemy, uh, this could be used for some secret radio capability. But you have to have a pretty good idea of what you're doing. You have to kind of know where your enemy is and what their capabilities are, and you have to know where your friends are and roughly how far. You have a lot of coordination when you need to do secret communication, whether you have fancy stuff or you're doing it old school, there's just uh, no two ways about it. Now, some radios uh, fall into multiple categories, hardware-wise, like uh, 
This digital high terror radio can also be used as an analog radio. It's a little bit of a pain, uh, but it's definitely doable. And it can be used with encryption on or unencrypted digital transmissions. So it has a couple of different spaces. And then the same is true of uh, Mesh-tastic. Mesh-tastic is something that is great for open communication, uh, unencrypted communication and finding new people, but it also has the ability to be broadcasting at those lower uh, wattages and hiding inside of 900 megahertz and has the ability to run encryption. And sometimes even lower powered Mesh-tastic devices like this little tracker card are kind of cool. This thing transmits at much less than a watt uh, with a little teeny tiny antenna in there, so its performance is not amazing. But again, for secret communication, sometimes you don't want super long range, high performance uh, transmissions. You want something that is very small. And Meshtastic, despite being a, I would say non real time, non tactical radio protocol, is useful for a bunch of different things. And the newer versions of the Meshtastic software and firmware allow you to do things like set devices up to be completely quiet, receive only devices, uh, or be better optimized for ATAC traffic. So it's going to be okay for certain tasks, not super mission critical real time stuff, but slower, quieter uh, coordination of different things. Um, yeah, it has some, has some significant capabilities in that public and secret space if you set your network up right. And then your private communication uh, that you're doing with encrypted uh, digital radios. Again, there's a fair amount of preparation here, but oftentimes less. If you're running DMR radios, oftentimes they can use the same keys. It may not be the 256-bit keys, sometimes it's one of the 40-bit keys, but it's the sort of thing that you can get together with people that you've never met before. If you're running DMR radios, you can kind of program them in the field, get on the same page. And then the beauty of the public radios is the ability to talk to people that you've never talked to before. If you can find the frequencies that they're on or they can find the frequencies that you're on, you have the maximum communicative capability, but obviously it comes with the least amount of secrecy. So as you think about radio communications, I recommend that you get started right away. There's a bunch of you that have asked for specific radio communications. And as you've listened to me talk about radio in the past, I have talked about things that I wish would happen in the radio space. I've talked about changes to the FCC. I've talked about features that I would like to be added to radios. I've talked about all sorts of things that I'd like to have happen in the future. But I want to encourage you not to wait because all those things that I would like to see happen are relatively minor compared to these categories of radios and the capabilities that they offer you. The frequency bands aren't going to change. Yes, it would be great if the FCC would let us use a little bit more of the spectrum, but at the end of the day, the physical realities of RF propagation are going to be the same. The physical realities of antennas are going to be the same. The, the newer radios that come out are going to be so similar to the old radios that you should get old radios now. You should work around them. You should learn the fundamentals. You should figure out the different categories and you should become proficient in radio communication. You should start with public. And yes, there's all these different licenses. It's in a different video where you can do different stuff, but public radios could be FRS radios. They could be GMRS radios. They could be ham radios. They could be unencrypted business band radios. There's all sorts of different ways that you could do public radio communication, experiment with the etiquette, learn how the different frequencies and bands work. What you expect from different pieces of hardware and their antennas and you could do it right now without waiting for me to I don't know somehow convince one of these radio companies to build the perfect radio and the FCC if you go for your ham radio license has a lot of restrictions and requirements that I don't really agree with uh, I'm on board in general with the idea that because there's a lot of spectrum and there's a lot of users having somebody to coordinate that makes sense but there's a bunch of FCC stuff that I'd like to see unlocked and opened up. And I would love it if ham radio operators who sit for the test and actually get their license would not have their private addresses published publicly. I think that would be a huge change. I have no idea why this is an FCC practice. So in spite of all the things that I'd like to see tweaked and changed and improved, Get yourself some radios. Don't wait for things to be much better or for things to be perfect. And learn about some of the different categories of UHF and VHF and HF stuff. Oh, we have another video for that too. But start thinking about these categories of radios and the things that uh, you should or could be doing with them.
get out there, uh, experiment with $25 radios, and uh, learn some of this stuff. It'll come in handy later. Now, there are other devices that aren't radios that kind of fall into different categories, like this Garmin in-reach device. Uh, in some ways, it is like a public device, because when you press this SOS button, you're connected directly to a 911 dispatch center, basically a global one that Garmin runs. Uh, but it's also extremely private when you communicate with specific email addresses or uh, SMS numbers, you're able to have just a lot of security. And I would say that it's secret against certain threat models. The transmission from this device is extremely low power and it goes straight up to satellites. The ability for people to detect uh, and intercept this transmission is relatively small, even for a lot of state actors. But for certain state actors, uh, this thing isn't secret at all. So it kind of depends uh, on your threat model, but it is a hugely capable device. It works everywhere on the world and it's going to be on sale at T-Rex this Black Friday. And if you sign up for our newsletter, uh, the sale will start early for you.